Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. We're going to have a show about something that really sucks, lice. My guest today will be Dr. Tiffany Lee here from the veterinary school at Kansas State University. Going to be a great show. Stick around after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life, it's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tiffany Lee, and we're here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Lee is a veterinarian and has a master's in production medicine and has been out in practice in Colorado. She's a Kansas native. We're always tickled to death to get her here on the show to talk about things that have to do with anything, any species really. And, and today we're going to talk about lice in, in livestock, but more specifically cattle. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Um, lice in cattle is a problem all across the industry, but it's not a problem that, that we think about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to talk a little bit about the causes and um, the actual organisms that cause you know, the problems, um, and then we'll go into some treatment stuff. Cool. Well, I think that the first thing is, is that, you know, lice in cattle, we have, we have different types of lice, but mainly two different categories, right? Yes. Um, there's two different categories, sucking lice and biting lice. Um, there's actually four kinds of sucking lice that uh, prey on cattle. Uh, the short nose cattle louse, the long nose cattle louse, um, we've got the, the little blue cattle louse, um, and then the cattle tail louse, which obviously um, kind of resides more on that, that backside at the tail head. And then um, the biting louse is just that, the biting cattle louse. So, so there are four species of the ones that, that, that suck, and then just one species in cattle that bites. Yes. And so can you tell me what the difference between sucking lice and, and biting lice as far as why, why I, I, I get why we call them that, but I mean, what, what's really going on there? Oh, basically the sucking lice um, actually feed on blood of the cattle. <clears throat> the biting lice uh, feed on more like the, uh, the actual, actual epidermis rather than the, the blood of the cattle. Okay, so the biting lice are gonna uh, eat on the skin and the sucking lice are gonna be like a tick, mm -hmm. burrow in, and, exactly. and actually go for the for the blood. Exactly. So, so different types. How do I how do I know which one's which? Basically, the only way to know is to take that organism, put it on a slide, and look at it under a microscope. Um, the sucking li louse um, has these little fangs, teeth um, that you can really see mm -hmm. under the microscope, and the biting lice do not. Cool. All right. Well, now when we we know that there there are different types but what about their life cycle i mean kind of give me a walk through because i think that's in general something that would be important sure um the the lice life cycle is actually really interesting it's a parasite that actually lives its entire life on the host um and it's tr therefore it's transmitted by direct contact they only survive about maybe two days um, off of the host. And one thing about lice is they're very species specific. So if cattle have lice, you know, that's the kind of lice that they're going to get. It's not the human lice. They can't transmit it to us. We can't transmit it to them, to them. And then the same with like dogs. I've had a lot of clients ask, well, my cattle have lice. Is my dog going to get it? They're very host specific. There's different kinds 
for different species, but um, only that, you know, if your cattle have lice, your dogs aren't going to get it. Cool. Um, and, and as far as, as um, thinking about, I mean, it's really important to understand that, that we don't transfer them from spe species to species. Sucking lice, biting lice, host specific. When we come back, we're going to discuss more about when to expect problems with lice and how to treat it. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Brendan Martin was raised on a beef cattle, poultry, and crop farm in Virginia. During college, he worked and interned in the cattle industry while raising his own Angus herd. As a result, he became interested in bovine reproduction and the power of genetic progress within a cattle herd. After graduation, Brendan started Valley Herd Health in Virginia, working mainly with beef and dairy cattle. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Calves require adequate, high-quality colostrum immediately following birth to receive the immune and nutritional support needed to fight diseases and thrive. Next Generation Colostrix Colostrum Replacer and Supplement are USDA licensed to aid in the treatment of failure of passive transfer and contain natural maternal bovine colostrum antibodies against E. coli K99. Ask your animal health supplier for Colostrix or visit agrilabs.com for details. Colostrix makes all systems go. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey there, folks. Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. Thanks for joining us today. I'm here with Dr. Tiffany Lee. And we're veterinarians here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University where we focus our research on production medicine and animal welfare and, and pretty much all things cows. And Dr. Lee is, is a specialist in production medicine who has a master's uh, degree. She's going to finish up a PhD. Yes, I She's going to be a doctor doctor. And she has been in practice out in eastern Colorado um, quite a few years. And so we're talking about lice in in the in cattle and when we left we talked about their life cycle and and some of the different types of lice but let's talk about some of the predisposing factors what are some of the things that that viewers out there need to be thinking about when it comes to lice prevention and, and what are some of the times of the year that we need to be thinking about lice sure well i think um you know, all, all, most cattle producers at least have, have at least experienced um, an infestation of lice. Um, not necessarily due to neglect or poor management, but those things can contribute to, um, to lice infestations. The really bad ones are where we see neglect, uh, poor nutrition, poor grooming. Um, so management is always going to have a part of, of any kind of, of problem that we have in cattle. And um, we can really help um, to manage having lice uh, by you know keeping our pens clean, uh, not overcrowding, and things like that. Now you know most most producers, you know again have seen lice, and they'll probably tell you that they usually see it in the winter time, mm -hmm. um, which is true. You know the the lice actually don't survive very well in um, in warm weather. Uh, I think it, down in Florida they don't even actually teach people about lice. Um, and you know, it's, the lice spread a lot better in cold weather 
because these cattle, they bunch up, if they're cold, they'll bunch, and that lice spreads from direct contact. Well, and we have the longer hair coats. Yep. Um, you know, when I, whenever we've had trouble with uh, lice in feed yards, it's almost always been a wintertime issue and as soon as that sun comes out in the spring and we start to get those longer days our lice problems go away but this is really a timely topic this is something that during the uh, January February time frames is when we start to see the the clinical signs mm -hmm. um, of, of lice infestation in, in yards or in cow herds or things of that nature mm -hmm. and those clinical signs that, that you want to look for um, are you know basically we can see the lice on the cattle. Um, that, that's a big sign. You can observe the cattle scratching. They're very, you know, they're going to get really itchy because that skin is dry, it's damaged. Um, we can also see with really bad infestations, um, anemia from those sucking louse, uh, lice uh, because, you know, they just, if, if there's a really bad infestation, they're going to they're gonna eat a lot of blood. Um, and then, of course, this, the lice infestations do cause poor production, um, you know, decreased immunity, uh, stress, and again, the anemia. Yeah, the big thing that you're gonna wanna watch for, hair loss and itching. Mm -hmm. when, when we have it in a feed yard, the cattle are all around the cables, they're rubbing their sides, they're trying to get away from it, and they start to have patchy yep. hair loss mm -hmm. uh, of that winter hair coat. So it's important during the winter that we make sure we prevent lice infestation, because then those cattle get chilled um, and, and decreased in performance. Uh, don't confuse it with the belly hair being gone if the cattle would freeze to the ground yep. during the night and, and go to stand up and pull hair away. But looking for lice, uh, hair coat issues, and, and scratching your fences down. And that you, a lot of times with the lice, you're going to see that hair loss um, up over the shoulders and the back rather than on that belly, um, like Dr. Dan said, where they could actually freeze and, and pull the hair off. Absolutely. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. This is Shane Terrell with Production Animal Consultation with your BQA Tip of the Day. Today we'd like to talk about uh, flooring on the processing facilities on the, the lead up alley and prior to the gate or prior to the entry, entry in the tub or the box, uh, in the box where those animals have a higher likelihood of slipping, uh, causing injuries or causing, uh, causing injuries themselves or causing foot injuries. A good option is interwoven tire mats. These things maintain a, a, a similar uh, uh, consistency through different types of uh, weather and in types of uh, moisture conditions. Uh, other options include uh, uh, some type of organic substrate, uh, sand, uh, straw, or, or deep bedded corn husks. We want to make sure if we use these, we create a deep bedded uh, type of situation so we don't create an abrasive surface with that organic matter. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea 
what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Beef producers asked for it, and the wait is over. Enroflox 100 Enrofloxacin from Norbrook, now approved for single-dose treatment and control of bovine respiratory disease. With the same active ingredient and dosing regimen as Batril 100 in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Choose Enrofloxacin 100 when looking for an injectable antimicrobial solution to treat and control BRD. Observe label directions and withdrawal times. See product labeling for full product information, including warnings and precautions. Consult your veterinarian to see if Enrofloxacin 100 is right for your cattle. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification (EID), electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tiffany Lee, and we are faculty here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where we work with beef production medicine, and we work out in the field on many different cases of animal welfare, animal health, medicine, and surgery cases uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And and we're talking about lice today. And and as we left, we're talking about wintertime being the prevalent time for lice issues, whether it's feedlot, cow herds, things of that nature. So in a feedlot situation, we're starting to look at, at treatment or prevention of lice on incoming cattle or reimplant cattle starting in November uh, in the upper Midwest. Uh, and then we will continue to, to treat cattle as they come in for those types of problems until we start to have spring, until we start to see the thaw, we start to see increased day length, that's when we can discontinue. No need to treat for lice or prevention of lice in the summer, but uh, you know, what are some of the things that we're going to use? Um, basically, you've got kind of two, two um, uh, areas where you can go as far as treatments. You can go like the ivermectin treatments, um, more of the actual antiparasiticides, or you can go um, kind of an insecticide uh, route. Uh, with the ivermectins, uh, doramectin, uh, things like that, you have injectable and you have a topical or a pour-on. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we do need to remember uh, when you're picking be between these products is <clears throat> the pour-on, or I'm sorry, the injectable is only going to get your sucking lice. It's not going to get your biting lice because, you know, those biting lice don't actually get that drug in them. Um, so that's one thing that you really need to, to make sure that you work with your veterinarian on, on determining which one, which product is best and, to use. And when you use the pour on, you'll get both. Yes, The biting you will. and the sucking. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we used to talk with our producers, specifically in feed yards, is that if you're going to use the injectable year round, then you have to bring mm -hmm. in one of the insecticides that we're fixing to talk about. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just use one product that when we get to the fall, we'll s switch from an injectable to a pour on so that we're also having proper lice coverage mm -hmm. and then we'll do that till the spring and we can switch back to the injectable. Exactly, yep. And like Dr. Dan said, if, if you don't want to switch from your injectable, you can use an insecticide such as a pyrethrin uh, to go ahead and get those biting lice as well. Yep, Sabre, Silence, mm -hmm. there are generic uh, pyrethrins. The big thing that Dr. Tiffany and I always agree on is that always work with your local veterinarian. They know the the products that work in your area, they know if you have biting lice or sucking lice, they've been in many herds, and your veterinarian can't carry it from herd to herd because um, they're <laughs> specific. True. That is so, true. But if he starts itching, do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing that I do want to mention, um, you know, if you do have a, a infection of lice and you treat it, you want to make sure that you don't mix those cattle with uninfected cattle um, because those lice can actually survive for up to about a week. So just make sure that you're not mixing infected cattle and, and non-infected cattle. Because they'll after jump treatment. off this one and onto that yep. one, and we have a problem over, over there. Exactly. So anyway, great information. Remember, uh, injectable does not get, a, get the biting lice. If you pour on, gets both. If you're going to use injectable, use an insecticide like Saber Silence. More on lice after these messages.
Cow, calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tiffany Lee. We're at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine where we serve on the faculty and teach beef production medicine and also provide service to, to producers and veterinarians uh, across the United States. And, you know, we, we have had a good discussion about lice and, and lice is never really on the top of your brain until you have it. And, and when you see lice in a, in a feedlot or a cow herd, it's going to be pretty obvious. You won't notice the first two or three cows that start scratching, but when there's 10 of them lined up along the fence, and I mean they will rub your fences down. Yeah, they'll pull when, them down. When they have the, the lice issues, um, it's something that, that you need to, to be concerned of in different parts of the country and make sure that we're using our preventatives. Two types of lice, right? Yep, sucking lice and biting lice. And again, the sucking lice actually feed on, on the blood of cattle, and those are the ones that you worry an, about with anemia and things like that. And, and we're gonna make sure that you work with your veterinarian on this, but, but we aren't gonna use, we aren't gonna be able to get those biting lice with the injectables. That is correct. And we'll have a lot of people that'll, that'll talk about, you know, do I use an injectable, do I use a poron, do I use an insecticide, and again, it doesn't matter. Work with your veterinarian. They'll know what's going on in your area. But, but some of the bigger things in the winter time are, you know, are we housing these animals indoors? Um, do we have uh, proper pen management? And I think that's something that that in the winter time, you know, mud accumulation. Um, it's just one more thing to take off the the stress or the the stress level of those cattle to make sure we treat them for lice. Mm -hmm. And I think with, as far as pen conditions go, we, gotta, we have to think about, you know, these pens, you get muddy areas and actually our pen space decreases. And, you know, that depending on the pen size, we can cause overcrowding and things like that. So you need to think about not just, you know, the whole pen area, but the, the living space in those pens. Yep, and the other thing is to make sure we have bunk pads clean. Mm -hmm. If you do have cattle, one of the things that we've done uh, for emergency treatment of lice with feeder cattle is we've actually taken the insecticide instead of running the cattle back through the the processing barn is actually you can put the back backpack saber type or silencer silence type packs on your back feed the cattle and then ride behind them and treat them for lice while they're up at the bunk mm -hmm. um, some of those types of issues that we've we've done 
If you do have a lice issue, you don't need to bring them back into the, to the processing barn just for lice. Uh, a lot of times we'll just implement that, that treatment for lice at the time of re-implant, which will be about 100 days prior to slaughter. So in that January, February time frame, instead of just treating them for lice, go ahead and bring them in for, for re-implant and then you're knocking out two birds with one stone. Exactly. Decreased stress too, right? Yep. Yeah. Decreased stress. Yeah. Well, folks, thanks a million for watching Doc Talk. We always appreciate you coming and watching the show and spending some time with us. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do here on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Send your emails and your questions. You've been watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Close caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.